Hey, today you, me, and Gracie, we're gonna do some scenery work on my N-Scale Model Railroad layout. We're gonna transform a helix and we're gonna do it right now. Stick around, y'all. All right, I picked up some white styrofoam. It's two inches thick. Uh, I will never do white styrofoam again. Look, um, took forever to clean up. Still out here, as a matter of fact. And so I had to make a piece to go in there because it, this piece had to be pulled out, y'all. And the reason being is down there on the bottom right hand underneath side right there, there are three turnouts that are interconnected. Uh, actually, four real close together in there. And you know we're gonna have issues down there so I'm gonna need to be able to access that so pull out that was the biggest problem uh, trying to figure out how to transform this helix into the side of this hillside was to make sure that I could get this piece right here out and still make it look somewhat realistic Today I'm making homemade sculpt mold but I'm not making my preferred homemade sculpt mold alternative because I don't have the right products. But what I do have is this 100% paper pulp, paper mache, alright, and this is going to fill in for my preferred method which I'm going to show you in a later video. Um, this is 100% pure white paper pulp, paper mache. Also, have quick drying perfect plaster. Water. To stir and spread. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it right here for you, and I'm going to show you how I make it up, okay? It's not hard at all, and uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera to the middle, and I'm going to show you applying it. All right, I've put a little bit on to test so far, and uh, I'll show you that in just a second as well. I'm going to use three parts paper mache. To one part plaster and I'm gonna add water till I get the texture that I'm happy with so one of the most important things really the only thing that you can really do here to mess up is add too much water too quickly if you get your ratio right in the beginning um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna use the container and um, the paper mache is really dusty and I keep my face and eyes away from it I should probably cover them but I don't want to now this is by volume not weight volume not weight One of these.
So that would have been one plaster, two water, three paper mache by volume. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in this bowl and I'm gonna do it again. And then I'm gonna put them all back into this bowl and I'm gonna take two batches and come over and get to work. See y'all in just a minute. All right, back from the Brian Kim lab. That was dangerous. Actually, this stuff worked out really well. I loved the paper mache. Um, I, it really came out great. It was easy to work with. The texture, the way it dried at the end was really nice for the, the texture that I was looking for um, at the end. Um, it, it gave a nice, uh, it resembled um, rocks, etc. when it dried. I really liked it. I got a clay mixture later that I wasn't so happy with. Um, and just laying more and more on, working on this little area to the right here because when that comes out, I've got to kind of have that hidden, um, that area down there at the bottom right. That was probably the toughest area to um, work in, was that area down there. I'm laying uh, paper towels soaked in a 50-50 water and white glue mixture have uh, styrofoam peanuts underneath the bottom there and basically that saved me a whole lot of uh, having to use a whole lot of plaster and other styrofoam and stuff. It was a filler. Um, I let that dry. It worked well and then I put the homemade sculpt mold alternative um, over the top of that and uh, later after this all dried I applied paint. This is a picture of Rattlesnake Gulch in El Dorado Canyon. All right, so what I'm getting ready to do, um, I have a lot covered, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of these because what I'm gonna do is the top of this here does, you know, go pretty straight up there at the very top, but it is uh it definitely levels out more uh shortly after the peak and so what i'm going to do is add some uh styrofoam in there and cover it with uh the sculpt mold as well um, to kind of get a closer effect to what's going on right here i'm going to go to time lapse and i'm going to glue that i'm going to mix some more mold i'm going to cover this as well as this area down here. I'm gonna go ahead and drop down a little if I can. As well as this area right here. So I'm gonna go to time lapse and show you me doing all that. Added some sawdust to the mixture um, just as an experiment. It really did produce a good color, although um, could have played with the texture, but I didn't like the texture. It came out a little too dry, but I could have messed with that. Um, even also did some great stuff foam. I tore up some small chunks of great stuff foam and ended up covering that with plaster again as well, and that gave a really nice look. 
Um, ran out of my paper pulp, and this is all I could find, and I did not like the Celia Clay. Um, it's a paper pulp product, but it dries super smooth. If you're doing roads or anything that you want the texture to dry super smooth, mix that Celia Clay with uh, like three parts Celia Clay, two parts uh, plaster, and two parts water, and it gives a nice, smooth finish, rock, nice plaster. Team seems to be crack free at this point. And I'm just spreading that stuff. This is the Cellular Clay now. Now the Cellular Clay worked out in this particular situation because I had those great stuff foam chunks down there, um, which is the reason why they came into play. I had noticed that the Cellular Clay um, was drying really smooth, a lot more smooth than I wanted. So I layered, I did a layer of the clay and then I tore up the small pieces of great stuff foam that had already dried that I had pulled out of the layout from before that I had saved and I just shoved them in the wet cellular clay. Um, let them dry in there and then came back over the top with another layer of it and that gave the impression of the little uh, uh, foam pieces poking out give the impression of jagged rocks coming out. Turned out really well if I do so, so myself. Um, parts of it. The part down here on the bottom right corner is a whole nother issue. This is actually a little after the fact, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm still working on the area down there in that bottom right corner of the screen right now. Um, just a little bit to get that like I want to. And a little bit of that has to do with this cellular clay issue where it dried a little smooth on me, and I don't really care for the fact that it's not matching the left side up there as perfectly as I would like to. Being a little picky, but there's a lot to go. Um, I will tell you that I really, really enjoyed this project so far. Um, it really did some amazing things in transforming the way my layout feels to me. And you're going to see here, uh, as we cut to the end, near the end of this video, I'm going to go to some more still shots where I'm kind of Ken Burns and in and out. And I'm showing you the finished product prior to ground cover paint, trees, and all that stuff because that's part two. And um, what I'm going to show you is just the, the transformation with everything covered because I still did have bare plywood down there and the helix was just terribly un overexposed. It was just basically sitting on the bare plywood. Um, then my area down near the uh, where I did the new T-loop, just put that in and got that done. Um, that was very old stuff that was just done to kind of cover the area temporarily just so my video shoots of my new South Boulder Creek didn't look so bad. And so I went back over that with all this method as well. And you're going to see that here in a second. And we ended up with a cover over everything with this sculpt mold and really got... Um, got lots of uh, good ideas, areas, and, and, and places I can go in regard to scratch build structures, maybe even some kits, but probably scratch build structures. I'll stay simple at first, but I'm kind of seeing lots of little um, areas and little things that could pop up, like little places their cabins and things would look cool and that kind of thing. So here we go. That's the finished uh, product there. Here we go. Looking in, coming in. This is as you would walk in the shed and down, from coming up from down underneath, showing everything covered. And as you can see, that's hidden pretty well there, the pullout. And that thing pulls out very cleanly and easily. It can come in and out in emergencies. And uh, man, I'm going to tell you what, I look forward to seeing y'all back for part two because the thing turned out nice. It really did, y'all. And do not forget to check back in with me on May 13th on my channel for the Community Roundhouse Episode 5. That's May 13th, 6 p.m. before Sparky. That's a premiere. 
That is the episode five of the Community Roundhouse. We got Monster Railroad, Big Al Mayo on there. Don't miss that. And every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time over on the Back on Track channel, we got Trackside, everybody. Don't miss that one as well. That's 10 a.m. Eastern Time. That's live. That's Back on Track. All right, everybody, I want to thank y'all for watching today. Check back in in a couple weeks for part two where I'll paint, ground cover, put trees in, all that good stuff. We're going to make it look good. We're going to show trains running at the end of that one too, y'all. Take care. One more thing from you. If you haven't already, I need you to click right here or click here or here or here. Anywhere to stick around, just stick around. <laughs>